Now, to our other case, nearly 2,500 pages of newly released emails and photos from the doomsday couple investigators out of Arizona. It's all part of an open records request. The Chandler police released this information, and basically more than anything, it shows that this was a very complex investigation, and it still goes on. But they also released a few new photos, including this one of J.J. Vallow wearing red pajamas on September 22nd, 2019. That's the last day investigators say he was seen alive. Investigators who uncovered J.J.'s remains found him wearing red pajamas. A photo from Lori's phone dated the very next day, <clears throat> September 23rd, shows multiple pictures of rifle ammunition taken at a gun store in Rexburg, Idaho. Its significance, well, not clear at this point, but part of this document dump that we received. In early October 2019, Lori's brother Alex Cox starts to come into the picture. Photos of Cox taking photos at a location just north of Rexburg, Idaho, were part of this document dump. This is from October 6th. And according to the new documents, Lori Vallow booked a flight from Idaho Falls to Arizona on October 8th, 2019. Why is that significant? Well, that is the day before Tammy Daybell reported that somebody shot at her outside of her home. And the speculation is that somebody was Alex Cox. Lots of information being dumped out of, um, and this, again, this was a records request put forth by several uh, media outlets and, and the Chandler Police Department dumped it all uh, out and it doesn't have a, a gotcha moment. It's like, oh, well, here's how they, f they came to the conclusion to file charges against Lori Vallow. No, it is more uh, of a testament of how complex this case really is. Someone who knows complex cases, former federal prosecutor Melissa Kirby is with us this morning. And Melissa, the, it used to be a federal prosecutor, so you get the uh, state line scenario, which these investigators had to deal with, and they relied on the federal authorities to help them. The FBI was very involved in this investigation of Lori Vallow and Chad Daybell. Arizona, Idaho, um, going back and forth, this document dump, it, it is, it just, it, it hammers home the complexity of a case like this. How difficult is it for not only law enforcement, but for prosecutors to have a multi-jurisdictional, multi-individual investigation, try to call it all together and then file charges? Because this did take a while. I think it largely depends on the jurisdiction. I think a lot of jurisdictions have really great task forces. They work together on more than one or two cases here and there. I think it's usually um, a matter of how well those relationships have been developed and are maintained. But in my experience, we always work really well, multi-jurisdictional with different agencies um, across state lines and across federal and state agencies as well. Yeah, and remind everybody that uh, Lori Vallow is her case is basically on hold. She has been ruled mentally incompetent for now. She's being treated, and at some point she will either be ruled competent for trial or she won't be. Uh, and then Chad Daybell, is, um, he has a, a trial set for November of this year. Originally, they were going to be charged together, which was going to be an advantage, one would argue, for the state of Idaho, now they are separated. Um, Melissa, as a former prosecutor too, when you, you have two defendants, um, it is, it's easier to tell the story, isn't it? When both are, are sitting in the courtroom, they're sitting next to each other at the defendant's table, rather than having them point the finger at each other when the other one's not there in the courtroom. This was a big blow for prosecutors to have Lori uh, basically be bifurcated and separated um, from Chad going to trial? Uh, well, yes. As a defense attorney, I prefer usually to try my cases um, for clients with a co-defendant. Oh, you, and, you like uh, a co-defendant? As a defense attorney, in a lot of cases, it works well. But as a prosecutor, it can definitely be a little more difficult at times. Um, but you get everyone at the table at one time and um, usually you get the truth shaken out when everyone's sitting there. Yeah, and, and, and jurors, you know, they, they look over and they see multiple defendants. It's a different take. That That is absolutely for sure. One of the other things that came out uh, from this document dump uh, in terms of the complexity of the investigation uh, is 
some redacted telephone numbers that clearly Chad and Lori <coughs> were at least apparently using burner phones. And there are emails from investigators going back and forth talking about um, the difficulties uh, uh, of this case in, in that regard in terms of the communication. In your experience, uh, uh, Melissa, you know, 2,500 pages sounds like a ton, but that's not that much when you look at discovery, in, in especially in murder cases. It is in the thousands and thousands, is it not at times? It can be, yes. Yeah, uh, and, and this is what we saw in this case. Again, uh, new information kind of coming out of uh, the Chandler Police Department because of this open records request. Bottom line is it didn't tell us anything more uh, about what uh, has been going on. We're going to step aside, take a break, much more when we return. Stay with us. You're watching Court TV, your front row seat to justice.